vile, psycho, kill yourself, no one likes you. I've made sure that I've never deflected from it and I've always said, that was me and I'm sorry. People make mistakes. So Faye, it's really nice to meet you. You are on the seventh series of Love Island 2021. Can you just talk us through how you got onto Love Island? I got approached on Instagram and I thought, I had this message on my inbox that said, we are casting for a show. We think that you would be great for it. Message us back if you're interested. When it came through, I thought, oh, okay, we'll go with it and we'll see where we go. And then obviously I ended up on the show, which is one of the UK's biggest shows. Yeah. I was very yeah. grateful. How did you feel about your body before you went into, into the show and, and your look? Before going into the show, I've always been like a very slender girl. From a young age, I always wanted a breast enhancement. Um, I've been very open about that. Um, I was very underdeveloped and I, I learned that from a very young age. Um, so when I've, that was nothing to do with the show. Um, so I'd already had my breasts enlarged twice before I went on the show. It was more so when I came out of the show, I saw that my body had changed quite a lot because we were sat around doing nothing, just eating all the time. Um, so then I was quite conscious of my body coming out of the show. Do you mind me asking what, you said there was an instant that made you want bigger boobs. Do you mind me asking what that instant was or what made you aware of that? I think I was at school and I, I can always remember Compared to my friends, I would always get like, I'd always ask my mum to get me like big push-up bras and I remember there was one time that I was, I was really young and I went shopping with my friends and I was so self-conscious that there was bras and they had like, they used to put in your own chicken fillet and I actually stole some chicken fillets and I got caught out for it and my mum had to come pick me up from the shop. It was really embarrassing but I think my mum really realised that I was really self-conscious of it. Um, but I was always very open that I knew as soon as I turned 18, that's what I wanted to do. Because I think you've had tweakment since you were 21. Was your boobs your first ever tweakment or...? Yeah, so I had my breasts enlarged. I turned 18 on the Friday. I remember I had train track braces because I, I had a gap in the front of my teeth, which now I actually probably would love, but I really wanted to close that over. I've done that just before my 18th birthday. I went in for my first consultation on the Monday and I had the operation a month after my 18th birthday. Wow. I just wanted to have something, I wanted to feel a little bit more feminine. So I actually had um, a small implant put in, I probably went to about a C cup. So really not big, so it shows how much, how small I was. So my first tweakment was done when I was, yeah, 21. Um, I always had really big teeth. So I always had big teeth, everyone thinks they're fake. But they're not, they're actually my own, um, but I had really small lips, so they just didn't frame my teeth. So I was always kind of self-conscious of that. Um, and I didn't really know much about filler. Um, it was only when it kind of became more of a craze that I thought, oh, okay, well, let's look into it. I had half a mil put in and she said, that's all I'm putting in your lips. Did it hurt? No, I, I, I'm a bit of a weirdo. I really love a needle in my face. So I then was like, well, I want more in my lips. I kind of then got this kind of frenzy for it of, no, no, I want my lips to be a bit bigger. I want my lips to be a bit bigger. And I then went on Instagram and I didn't look at who was doing it, if they were medically trained, what their profession was. I literally looked at who was doing it for the cheapest and I looked at their Instagram results. I found this girl, went to her. She didn't stop. She, she had no reason so she wasn't doing it because she was medically trained she wasn't doing it because she wanted to enhance my natural beauty she was doing it because she wanted to make excessive profit for something that she didn't have to train in and then i had botox again went on instagram because at the time i thought the girl that's doing my lips oh she she's great she's got my lips massive my mum and dad were telling me Faye, you need to stop but i wouldn't listen because what do my mum and dad know <laughs> nothing <laughs> it was the realization that i had gone too far that I had Botox done it completely relaxed my forehead muscles 
Um, so my brows couldn't move. I was basically, my forehead was paralyzed, but in like a frown, like kind of like a frown effect like this. Um. And I couldn't move it at all. So I could, and so I had a constant pressure on my forehead. But at the time I was going through my Love Island auditions, I went for my final Love Island audition to see the execs with my face taped up <laughs> because I couldn't actually get my eyebrows to lift. And there was no, there was nothing out there to counteract can, it. Yeah, to take back what the Botox had done. Botox is a toxin that goes into your skin and your muscle. So you can't remove it. You can't remove it. There's nothing, you, and, I, and in that moment I realized that I really screwed this up for myself. I could potentially not get on a show, which at, at that point I'm really excited about, you know. I went into the show and then I came out and I saw my face and I thought, I don't recognize you anymore. And that was really sad. That was a sad realization. Were you, were you upset? Yeah, I was really upset with that. And then I think- Do you know why you were upset? I think, because obviously as well, my lips were like a massive talking point on the show and I got a lot of trolling for that, but I could understand why and that was really difficult to I, I i agreed with people so that's it's it's different being trolled against something and you don't agree with what they're saying you know i've been trolled because people think i'm a terrible person at, at one point when i come out of love island I, I thought i was the worst person in the world why do you think it was a lot why do you think i think because i came out of love island i had a lot of backlash you know I'd done what I'd done on that show. I'm not proud of how I reacted in situations on that show, but I, I can honestly say that, and I still say to say, that still doesn't define me as a person, but I felt like that one snippet really defined me in my journey. By that, do you, are you talking about uh, you had an argument with Teddy and there were 25,000 complaints from Ofcom? Yeah, was... and I, I feel like that one part of the show really, took away from every other good aspect of the show because I had some amazing highs in there and I had such an amazing personal journey. So I am forever grateful to Love Island because actually what I discovered about myself in six, eight weeks, although it was hard and a lot to process, it would have taken me two years on the outside to know what I needed to change about myself. Not very many people get to see their flaws played out in front of people and I came out and yes, did it impact my mental health? Did I, was I in a really dark place? Do I think I deserved the hate? No, but I wouldn't have grown and I didn't want to come out and, and talk about that side of it. I didn't want to come out and say, your comments are really affecting my mental health. You're actually putting me in a really dark place because I didn't want to do a cop out of this. I didn't want to cop out and say, I want to stop talking about, I, I, I want to deflect the blame. What I'd done, I'd done. I have to take full responsibility for that. I have to take full credit and say, I messed up and I'm sorry. And I've said that for two years. Okay, it's all right. Ooh. Okay, but it doesn't, I didn't want, like, I, and now it's like, okay, do you actually talk about it? And do you actually tell people how online trolling does affect people? Because I don't know at what point people will say, oh, she's only saying that, or she's only crying about it now because she wants to deflect from it. Because I haven't, I've made sure that I've never deflected from it and I've always said that was me and I'm sorry people make mistakes and you were very young you, I, well I was and 26 also... like I, I, I can't I'm not going to blame it on my age I'm going to I'm not I'm not going to blame it on anything other than I reacted to a situation wrongly and that's all I can say there was um, there was a hundred other different ways that I could have reacted in that situation I chose not to, and I can blame past experiences. I could, I, I could blame 
being in that villa in an intense environment, which all of those things are true, but it doesn't. It still doesn't allow me, or it still doesn't give me the right to react the way I did. So I've had to say for two years, I ha I messed up. I messed up, and I'm sorry. And I think you know I but, didn't but go. Who, on are you, who are you sorry to? Well, I offended a lot of people, and I, I'm sorry to the to the person, and I've obviously apologised to that person numerous times. And you know, I I spent. 18 months of my life trying to make that up to him and also being in the public eye and you know trying to show the public eye that I'm I'm not that terrible person that you saw in that in that small snippet that was just a small blip of my personality that I've grown through and I think I wouldn't have ever grown through it if I hadn't gone through it that way I never went on that show to do like fashion and stuff. Like I actually really wanted to go on there and I wanted to come, my idea was that I was gonna come back off and go back into my normal day-to-day -day life. I only took a sabbatical from work. Like I was just gonna go back to a state agency. I was really happy in what I'd done and the people that I had around me, I never wanted to move to London. That was never in me to do that. I wanted to continue with my charity work and I'd done my charity work with the guide dogs for, years and years and years I'd, I'd helped raise six guide dogs with my through my volunteer work that moment took away from all of my even to the point that and I don't blame them but you know charities maybe looked at me in a different way and thought do we really want to work with her even though I had done years and years of volunteering before for them all because I couldn't keep my big mouth shut do you think the trolling made it worse. Yeah, the trolling put me to... Yeah, I, I was in a dark place. It was horrendous. Was it about the row or was it about the filler or, or the tweetments? What, or was it everything? Everything. I can't pinpoint it on one thing, but I can't... Although I don't agree with trolling, and I don't agree with it, I think it's disgraceful, I couldn't blame them. I could block them and I could not see it, but I don't need to allow that into my space. This is my space. But yeah, I'm happy to go through like my blocked words. Okay, so we've got the usual. Vile. They're the normal ones. Skep. Psycho. No one likes you. Munting. Mentally ill. Mental illness. Looks like a man. Knob, kill yourself, jarring, insecure, hate her, a lot of F words, um, em embarrassing, dog, die, clapped, childish, well, I agree with that one, and duck, fake, we got minging, disgusting. Oh, I guess that would be all the way about the way I look. Do you still get them now? Do you get? Do you check your DMs now? Um, I don't check them now as often. I think, especially from when I came out of the show, um, I had 18 months where I was in quite a dark place. And like the last year, because obviously it's now been two and a half years since I've been out of the show, the last year I've, I've really taken to heal. Um, I moved back to Devon. Um, Obviously, I did change my appearance quite a lot. I had my filler dissolved. Um, that was when I first came out of the show, but... Was that because of the comments or because of the way you'd seen yourself or Both, everything? both, but I think more so because of the way I'd seen myself. So obviously, I knew... I've always said that I never went into Love Island. Like, I, I, I haven't got a massive ego. Like, I know I, am, I was put on that show because I'm a big personality. But even I came out of the show and my personality shrunk. Um, Did you um, have to go into therapy? Because I know you say a dark place. I mean, yeah. W was it, may I ask, how dark? Yeah, it was, it was bad. Um, I think I was in therapy, um, especially when I lived away from my friends and family. I was in therapy. I really struggled with that because I'm, I'm so, like I said, the people I'm close with, I'm so close with them. They are 
the people I rely on, they're my support network. I didn't have them. I felt so alone. That was a really, that was a dangerous time, I think, for me. And that's, that's okay. Like, I, I, I reached out to, my, I reached out to my daughter. I reached out for help. So that was the best thing. I wasn't in a good place mentally. I wasn't. And the comments and what people were saying, I started to believe them. And that's difficult. It's, it's one thing getting trolls and getting trolled and thinking, okay, you think that, but I, 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 think, I, I see myself differently. I, I know I'm a good person. I know I've got a good heart. I know that what I do is for the right reasons. I know I'm not, I haven't gone on this TV show for the reasons you think I went on this TV show. I'm okay with that. But when you start to question it yourself, that's when it's really difficult. You start to question, okay, did I go onto this show because I wanted clout? Or did I go onto this show because I wanted more followers and I wanted fashion deals and actually I've got nothing else behind my eyes. I've got no brain because I went on this show. Well, even if you did, well, why not? I... Why not? Yeah, why? it's why fine. Can't you? I think because <laughs> I know I didn't do that. That's what's up to I, me. That's what got to me and I thought like, okay. And then you start to look in the mirror and you're like, Okay, am I, am I actually, do I need to get my nose fixed or do I need to get my chin shaved? And then I lost a lot of weight um, just before I moved back down to Devon. Um, I, I, I lost a lot of weight and then there was a lot of troll, like a lot of people mentioned about my weight. And I've never really spoken about that because I think there's like skinny shaming, just like there's fat shaming. Yeah. I knew I was skinny and I knew I'd lost weight and I, I wasn't in the, I wasn't, I didn't look at myself and think, oh wow, she looks great. It wasn't, I was doing it because I thought I was fat. I was doing it because I was really stressed. I couldn't yeah. eat. Um, Are you one of those people that, because I know I am, if I get stressed, that's can't it. Can't eat. Yeah. yeah. If I'm full of anxiety, I can't eat. Um, and I never thought I was one of those people. I never thought I suffered. I didn't know what anxiety was. That was hard, like, that was, it was difficult. I couldn't even go into my supermarket. My therapist had to come with me. She, she really helped me. She really helped me. And then, like I said, I, I kept, moved down to Devon. I had my little dog, um, Bonnie, who is the light of my life. And um, I've never been in therapy again. I've never, I can't, it was like, I was driving down to Devon and it was like, a weight, I, I think because I didn't recognise myself, I, I, I lost everything around me that made me me. I yeah. lost Devon, I lost my friends. I didn't lose them, but they weren't there all the time. They weren't like, I couldn't go pop and have a cup of tea. I, I wasn't in the job that I loved anymore. Yeah. Okay, I, I didn't really recognise the way I looked from the way I looked on TV. Okay, I've started to change that. Okay, I now haven't got the big lips. Okay, like I started to, I lost the way, I didn't recognise myself in the mirror, but I didn't recognise who I was inside. And that was tough. And then I drove down to Devon and it was just like the biggest weight had been lifted off of my shoulders. And in that moment, I just thought, okay, I, I, can, I can do this. Like I am going, I'm going home and I've never felt that way before, ever. So, and then since then, it's been, it's been great. And I think I've literally been going from one strength to another. But this is all personal development. I didn't want, I didn't need any new friends. I didn't need a new place to live. I didn't need, I, I didn't need a new relationship. I didn't need any of that. I just needed to get back to me. But get back to me as a person that had grown. And that's what I've done. So now when I look back at comments like that, 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 that trolls have sent me in the past, I'm, I'm, I'm back to the person of, I know I'm a good person with a good heart. You don't have to agree with me. You don't have to agree with things that I've done. I don't agree with some of the things I've done. I've learnt from them. Do you ever regret going on Love Island after everything that you've been through? Do you regret it? I would say when I came out of the show initially for like the first, well the first couple of weeks, no first couple of months was great. It was like really hyped. It was like, oh my God, this is a new world. And then I thought, have I done the right thing? I really loved my life before. And then I questioned myself for a long time. And then now I can say, no, I don't regret doing the show. I regret sometimes the way I acted. I regret sometimes the way I looked. 
But I can't change that, I can't change it now. So I don't regret doing the show because it's allowed me to have this amazing platform with amazing followers and amazing people that support my journey. And I can and I will make a difference. Somewhere along the line I will. So absolutely not, it's an amazing show and it could be even better if people just took it for what it is. It's a light, it should be light-hearted, fun drama. Drama being the main word, it's a TV show in the sun with people finding love. Just take it for what it is, take the arguments, take the fun, but stop trying to ruin it with social media and the trolling. What are your hopes and dreams for the future? What, what do you want to achieve? So for the future, I just want to continue with what I'm doing now, which is my volunteer work. I think it's so important to get out there that that helped me so much with my mental health and giving back um, to charities, I think it's so important. I want to, cont I really want to get more into my animal welfare. Definitely in the UK, there's a massive problem with our dogs, man's best friends. So I want to work on that a lot more and also stay talking about regulating the aesthetics industry. So, and I work with incredible brands that I do every day, so that are authentic to me. So yeah, it's an exciting time coming up. Hey, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being so honest and lovely. Thank you.